This is Rock and Roll Grad School with your hosts, Heidi Hedquist and Luke Poling. All their favorite songs are slow and sad. Hello, kitties. We are going to have a good time together because, I shouldn't say because, I feel like I always say because so-and-so was on the show. Well, do you want to start just ending the sentence? Have a good time together? so-and-so's on the show that's true uh hello kitties we're gonna have a good time together today on the show we have steve garvey from the one and only buzzcocks yes uh it turns out steve and i are neighbors who knew i know not like next door where we're arguing over who cuts which side of the hedges but but close like close um, how me and bob seeger yeah so someday maybe steve and i will be able to argue over hedges I would love to hear you argue with Steve over hedges. Uh, it's a, a friend of a friend. Of a hedgerow? Yes, ex- there, there would be a bustle, let me tell you. There would definitely be a bustle in your hedgerow. Um, one thing we didn't talk about, and I just sort of over the weekend discovered this. Um, so last week, I took the elder to go see Bob Dylan for his first show. Yes. And I am a bad judge of these things because... Uh, my minutia of enjoying this goes down rabbit holes with rabbit hole, within rabbit holes. Yes. But his review of the show in general was that was better than I thought. So I think that's a thumbs up. It is. That's a win. But, but here's the thing I found out this weekend that I was very excited by. So the show was November 30th in the year of our Lord, 2021. Yes. It is the first time. And I have, I had other, I saw other Dylan people checked this. The first time in Bob Dylan's career, he ever used the word yummy on stage. Really? Yep. He described uh, Philadelphia cheesesteaks as yummy. And he said, you eat one of those things, you don't need to eat for the rest of the year. Wow, that's quite a rollicking Yet again, speaking truth. That is. That and then is. he asked if Dick Clark was still from Philadelphia and if Fabian was still around. So, you know, well, as one does. Of course. Uh, did he ask about Hall and Oates? He didn't. He did bring up, uh, it's great to be the home of the Liber- at the home of the Liberty Bell. Rocky? He did the night before mentioned Rocky. Okay. I think it was, it's great to be in Philadelphia, home of the Liberty Bell. I believe it was Frankie Avalon, cheesesteaks. No, cheesesteaks and the rock and Rocky. He they came up. He came up as well. So, he should. Good. Yeah. I just want to love like any other. What do I get? I only want a friend who stay to the end. What do I get? What do I get? Oh, what do I get? What do I get? Oh, what I do guess I my get? first question to start is, why can't I touch it? Why can't I touch it? I think I think you tell uh, Pete is talking mostly about like emotion. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, why can't I touch love? Or you know, I suppose we'll the connotation that people are going to have always taken a little bit from that song is there, you know, like being rude, but it's right. really not about being rude at all. You know, mm-hmm. but certainly if you listen to the lyrics, oh, non, the, you know, why can't I touch the thing that's in my heart, in my soul, the hurt in my chest, you know, the heartbreak. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what I've always got taken from the song, you know. That was, um, it, you know, it, it, it turned into our one of our most popular songs, and it was just a B-side. And it was, it was uh, I think it was on the B-side of uh, Everybody's Happy Nowadays, right? I think. I think yeah. I, I'm familiar with it on the single, it was going steady, so it certainly isn't a album yeah. track. Yeah, it was on the, it, it was on the B-side of... Uh, Everybody's happy nowadays, uh, which we recorded at Strawberry Studios in Manchester, which was NTC Studio. Okay. Uh, we'd never we'd never recorded there before, and we we had the 
the A side, we, we had that song down, and we had to come up with a a B side. And you know, I guess the day or two before we, uh, you know, I, I started to jam with that bass riff, and Pete walked in and he had a, a lyric. Um, said, "Oh, well, that sounds like a good B side." Yeah. One of the things that I feel like is so identifiable with Buzzcocks and especially those first few records is the interplay between you and John, uh, the drummer, that you guys just seem to lock in and just stay together. I tell you, John was an amazing drummer. He was just natural. He's not been playing long. He'd only been playing for six weeks when the band formed. <laughs> wow. He was just a natural, you know. Now, the band was in existence for a year before I joined. Uh, they, they, uh, you know, Howard DeVoto was the, was the lead singer of the band. He left. For what reason? I don't know why. And then Pete took over. And then the, his, his friend Garb joined on bass. And he was with him for about six months. But he had problems with him. He was an alcoholic. He was so crazy. And... Uh, and, you know, I was in the right place at the right time and knew the right people. Essentially, that, that was the, the fall. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, the band, the fall. Um, mm-hmm. I was, they were all my best friends. And um, they recommended me for that, that gig. So I got an audition and I have the audition. <laughs> Did you know right away this was going to be where you wanted to be, or was it more like, oh, let's just do the audition, see what happens? Uh, well, I, I, I just knew, because I'd seen the band a few times. I was sure. a big punk rock fan, you know. I, uh, and my chops were good. I, you know, I'd been playing, I was 14, and I was 19, so it wasn't that long, but I'd been playing in cover bands, school bands, so I knew the songs. Uh, the, uh, and I, 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 I got on with the guys well, you know. I'm assuming they were kind of playing the sort of stuff you liked and you were playing that sort of poppy punk. Because I know a few of the guys, Pete, had seen the Sex Pistols or, or opened for the Sex Pistols prior to your joining. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. They brought the, uh, the Pistols up to Manchester. Um, Two times. The first time they were supposed to open up for them, but they they weren't ready. And then the second time they did open up the sex pistols. And um, I did not see any of those two shows, actually. (laughs) I saw the sex pistols at the Electric Circus in Manchester, and they were just fantastic. Scary. (laughs) You know, like... Good, good, good rock bands or rock and roll bands, they can be scary sometimes. For sure. In the very the... best way. Yeah. That, <laughs> you know. Um, but they were just a fantastic band. It's insane they couldn't keep their shit together, you know? Yeah. They, they should never got rid of Glenn Matlock. Stupid, <laughs> stupid, stupid, stupid. I mean, great guy. Great face boy, and he, he wrote a lot of the songs, you know? Right. Yeah. Idiotic. Idiotic. Oh, what is that? Bands aren't always known for making the best decisions <laughs> of any sort. Yeah, well, I tell you, when you're young, when you're young, you do stupid things. Yeah. Some of us still do them when we're older, too. I, I can attest to that. <laughs> yeah. But, Hopefully, you have a little more wisdom. Yes, hopefully. I'm hoping. <laughs> but, um, you know, it, my timing was good. I was, I was really into punk rock, and I, I just had a feeling that I, 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 would, I would see them with God playing bass, and I would say to my friends, it's not good, it's terrible. It don't look good. It, <laughs> I said, I need to be in that band. And and it happened, you know. And it was like a dream come true, you know, like any other kid. I wanted to be a rock star or a pop star. It's called pop stars over there. Yes. And, uh, and it happened. 
the first song I recorded with them was uh, What Do I Get? Mm-hmm. And um, and that was a hit record. So yeah. Great. Yeah. If you need a song to start with, that's a good one. That's, yeah, it's a very yeah. good place to start. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good one, yeah. yeah. For sure. Yeah. I, I remember that's the only time anybody ever to- told me what to play. <laughs> I remember uh, they, 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 there's a bass uh, well, the, the bass and guitar line in, in, in the bridge where uh, Pete, I remember Pete actually telling me what to play. That's the only time I can ever remember anyone ever telling me what to play. Wow. So and, uh, being the, the, the first song you were recording with them, was, were you like, all right, I'll, I'll do that? Or are you like, why is this guy telling me what to play? No, <laughs> yeah, I just joined the band. I'm on my, on my oh, best behavior. Whatever you want, true. Pete. But no problem. <laughs> just don't ask it again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but we recorded that single uh, on the B side was oh shit. Uh-huh. Um, um, at the uh, Olympic Studio, which I mean I didn't know at the time. It's a pretty very famous. Studio. I don't think it's still going now. In in, uh, in London, South London, and that's where a lot of classic rock bands recorded. You know, the, the Stones, Led Zeppelin, The Who. I remember when we showed up that day to re- to record. What do I get? The Hollies had just finished a session, uh, and we got to meet the Hollies. It was like, oh my God, this is like awesome. the big time. <laughs> yeah, I was a member. They were a Manchester band as well, you know. It just seems like something about Buzzcocks sort of covers all genres in a way that it's okay to listen to you guys and like the Hollies, and because the Sex Pistols obviously had a very hard and fast, you know, the the story that Glenn Matlock liked the Beatles, so we got to chuck him out. It, it seems like you guys yeah. were much more like well. Any influence we can get and bring in, the better. Yeah, we we didn't have barriers. We didn't have barriers. It, okay. You know, I mean, you mentioned about working with John. I mean, we never talked about anything. We we just played. Period. You know, I can't remember ever. Think that. It's. I think it's a Manchester thing. You know, we don't sit down and say, "Well, what are you playing here? What should I play?" We just play. Mm-hmm. You know, work it out as we go along. And it mostly worked. Sometimes I listen to some things and I think, oh, that could have been better. (laughs) (laughs) You know, especially like the Love Bites album, my second album, I I listened to that and and I think that could have been a better record. It was just, it happened too quickly after the first album. You know, Mm -hmm. you, you get on that roller coaster of uh, recording and touring and touring and touring and then you're right back in the studio and you, you've not had ch- enough time to really work out any new songs and, uh, and it trips up a lot of bands you know yeah certainly from that era um, i was but, gonna say yeah. it seems like you know you, you even the beatles with the get back film that people now we're saying, you know, I've, either Ringo or Paul said, oh, if we had just taken eight months off from each other and gone away, we could have gone back together. Do you guys, There's do you no think that, yeah. that you guys would have made it a little bit longer the first go round if you had just like said, we need a break from each other. Let's go our separate ways yes. and come back in a little yes. bit. Yes, there's no doubt. I mean, um, when we got together, this would have been what, 80, 1980, I think. Uh, mm-hmm. to, to do the the fourth album, we were all, you know, with five years into the career. Uh, 81, I can't remember. And um, Pete was exhausted. He was, you know, he was very disillusioned by everything. Plus the fact that, you know, all the work we'd done, we had no money. All the money had been frittered away. Uh, Pete had some money from publishing but he didn't you know he didn't want to fund the band right uh and then uh united artists 
uh, label got taken over by EMI. EMI didn't show any uh, much interest in the band, and um, so Pete got very disillusioned, and um, he went off with our record producer Martin Russian to try and help mine try and help Pete to work on some of these new ideas for songs. And the next thing you know, they're making the Homo Sapien album. And he said, well, I don't need the band. So he got a letter from his attorney saying that he was quitting the band. Hmm. This day and age, it would have been, oh, I'm going to make my own solo album. Right. You know, and I'll see you in we're a not couple months. Quit the... Yes. Yeah. But yeah. You know, then it was kind of the end of the world, you know. I mean, it's like, well, what do we do now? Uh, yeah, we'll talk about the good times. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's much better. Right? I'm te- definitely yeah. more on board with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And we we had a lot of good times. We got on very well together. We had a lot of fun. We we could party with the best, you know. Uh, <laughs> that's something um, to be proud of. As well, you should. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, we, Is there we a- were treated like treated like kings and and acted like pigs. Perfect. Most <laughs> most most that's, kings I know do act like pigs. So you acted like yeah, a king. Yeah. <laughs> no, we, we were actually we were good guys. We were polite and everything, and um, had a good reputation. And we we always found a good show. I felt, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, you, I know you, you're a young guy, so you would not have seen the band back in the day. But uh, we always found a good show. We're not that young, but <laughs> <laughs> but we'll pretend we are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, then we got back together in in uh, what was it, eighty nine, and I, I we toured around the world a few more times, I playing old stuff and then introducing new stuff, uh, and that was a lot of fun. But then it became very very stressful for me because I was living in New York. Okay. I was married with two little children. Oh, gosh. I to go to London and be away for months at a time. And they always come back with half the money that they promised me. Right. Mm-hmm. Of course. It was getting very stressful for me. Uh, and then I, was, I had tremendous pain in my face. Oh, gosh. And I found out like a year or so after. I, I, I told the band that I had to quit. I need to three of them. Um, I find out later that I had cancer in, in, in my cheek. Oh. Most bizarre thing you could ever imagine. The big tumor. Oh my gosh, that's like, horrible. Spread, yeah, it was spreading into my nerves and into my brain then. Oof. Um, so I had multiple operations and massive radiation. And uh, you know, at that point, I'd, I'd quit the band and. Uh, uh, trying to get on with the rest of my life, and then that happens, you know. Yeah, that'll that'll tend to change your direction a bit. Yes, yes, yes. And, uh, but and and they carried on without me, which is fine. I would go and see them. Um, you know, I got over the cancer, and I'm still here, obviously. Yes, which is the, the most <laughs> important thing. This is me. This exactly. is me. <laughs> <laughs> What is it like to see your own band perform? Did you want to be up there? Or were you like, oh, they're doing all right? Or was it like, oh, they're messing well, up? Well, <laughs> yeah, it, it, I tell you, it, 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 it was always mixed feelings. Um, uh, the first bass player they had, uh, Tony Barber, uh, he was a great guy. He was a super guy. And he, you know, he loved the way I played. So I, he would drag me on stage, and give me his bass, and I would do an encore with them. Awesome. But, you know, mm. all all through the the nineties and uh, the, through the early nineties, and then uh, then he left, and they got another bass player, Chris. Now Chris was a lot more a uh, great guy, but he, he, he I don't think he was comfortable with me going on the stage, uh, and I was fine with that. I didn't need to go on the stage. Uh, there, but last time I saw them play with with Pete when Pete. Live was the Stone Pony, 
um, mm-hmm. the outdoor at the outdoor uh, arena they have there. And I'm, I'm in the audience, and it, it, was, it was so blissful seeing all these punters, you know, all these young people just singing along to every song. <laughs> and they were in total bliss. And it was the most amazing feeling. Yeah. That, you know, uh, I just wish I was on stage, but it wasn't my gig anymore, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but it, 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 that, that was the last time I saw Pete before he died. And, uh, and it was great, you know? I always had a great time with him. There was no hard feelings, nothing like that. That's good. Yeah, I'm, I'm they, very you know, few people. Steve Diggle is always a pisser, you know. He's always great, a lot of fun. Likes to drink, and he's total rock and roll. Perfect. Total rock and roll. <laughs> yeah. You're probably one of the few people who had that, you know, Tom Sawyer, Huck Finn mm-hmm. moment of being able to go to your own, you know, in, in the book, obviously, it's a funeral, but to go see what the deal was about your band, to be like, oh, right. now I get yeah. it. Like, yeah, we're, we're very, good. we're yeah. cool. <laughs> People like us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's, um, you know, people always say to you, well, didn't, didn't you get sick of playing the, 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 the same old songs or the hits or whatever? And I can honestly say that being a musician, when you're on stage and you're playing the hits that you've played a thousand times, you, you know, you're on automatic pilot, but you're right. just, you're, you're, you can feel the radiation from the audience. And how much they love it, and that's what you get up on. You know, you don't mind playing the song, those songs, because you know that they love those songs. It's right. playing the new songs that is always hard, because <laughs> hard to play the new songs because you know the people are not, they don't know those songs necessarily, or they don't care for them that much. You know, they don't love that's them yet. The hard work. Yeah. You know? oh. And then after you left Buzzcocks, you had a bunch of other bands you had played in, uh, Motivation slash Shy Talk. And then for a while, you had played with Blue Orchids, where Nico was the lead singer. And I feel like I... Yeah, that's what... uh, Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, I just have to ask what Nico was like at that time, especially the early, you know, mid-80s. Yeah, that's... uh, That was after the band started up in... I uh, Blue Orchids, uh, some of those guys were in the original fall. Mm-hmm. Mark and Brahma. Uh, uh. Well, anyway, Heron was, was cheap in, in Manchester, so she settled in, in Manchester. Mm-hmm. You got a group of, you know, uh, Blue Orchids were a band and they, they had them open. Uh, you know, oh, I think they would open a show and then they would play for her, but they, the guitar player, um, oh, the, sorry, the bass player moved on to the second guitar, so they needed a bass player, so I, uh, you know, I wasn't doing much, it wasn't for a whole lot of money, so, but I, I, I told with her for, not a whole lot, maybe three months, I can't remember, but she was very, very nice, she was very nice, pretty quiet, um, she took it shining to me, you know. <laughs> kind of weird. That was kind of weird. She's, uh, you know, she was much older than me, that's for sure. Uh, but um, it was it was very interesting playing with her, you know. I mean, I, I I'm not going to admit to saying I was a big Velvet Underground fan. Uh, you know, I certainly appreciated them, but it wasn't. I've been, you know. Sure. Uh, right. But um, I, I certainly love the song that she sang on. Yeah. It, it was fun. I had a good time. I had a good time. That's uh, all we can ask. But, but after that, I started working with Pete Shelley. Mm-hmm. He, he called me up and he, 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 was, he got a band together for a Homo Sapien album. And we did a world tour. Um, on, on on that album, and um, that was a, I had a great time on that tour. That was a lot of fun, and I was being paid really well. I was being paid like eight hundred dollars a week. Back then, was a lot of money. Oh, that's good. 
That's good. Yeah. 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 And the last show we did on that tour, which was uh, the, right at the end of May, um, we played the Peppermint Lounge on, when it was on Fifth Avenue. And uh, we, we opened it, actually. Oh, wow. Um, mm. And I, I remember showing up for the gig in the afternoon to a sound check, and they were still building the stage. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a carpenter. I was trained as a carpenter as a young man. And so I, I remember helping him build the stage. And we never did get a sound check. <laughs> uh, it was a bit, bit of a disaster, but, you know, we were well rehearsed, so it went down well. And... Um, Anyway, I, I had a ticket to go home to Manchester the next day, and I'm looking out at the audience, and I've never seen so many beautiful girls in my whole life. It's just a sea of beautiful people. And I said to myself, I don't want to go home. I'm going <laughs> to stick around. And, I, and that's exactly what I've done. I've stuck around for 30-odd years, you know. Oh, that's outstanding. I was 82. 82, so how many years is that? 38 years? Yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> Just a few. That's but, so, yeah, I, I, I tried to get a few uh, musical things going and um, didn't want to be a gun for hire. Uh, I had yeah. one guy from Manchester that I brought over. A really, really good singer and a pretty decent songwriter. And, um, but it, it nothing really worked out. Um, and the, the mid eighties were, were were very tough for me. You know, up yeah. going, going back to work and stuff. It was weird. That had to be yeah. weird. That had to be so weird. Yeah, it was. But then the band got back together again, so I was able to get get out of it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bigger run for it for a while. Yeah, yeah. You know, even though we were very popular, we didn't make a lot of money. You know? Yeah. Um, we didn't. Uh, we very. You know, we had what eight uh, top forty hits in Great Britain. We had five in, in nineteen seventy eight, which is uh, pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty outstanding. Yeah. <laughs> Just. And I know you've said when we were talking kind of prior to, to actually setting that while well, we were setting this all up that you've kind of you're kind of retired, but, you know, you've still got bands going. Do you think you're ever going to give it up? Do you think you're just are you kind of addicted to that being on stage? With well, I, friends I, did and give it, I did give it up for a long, long time because uh, doing carpentry work is very, very exhausting. Oh. It didn't have a lot, you know. I'm bringing up a family, and and, uh, and and reality is, you know, you work hard, and very often you work in on the Saturdays, and you, you don't have time to play music. Now, I did a little bit of uh, record producing. Uh, I moved to the New Hope area. Mm -hmm. I, I've got like my little project studio in the basement, so everybody. And uh, so I worked with some singer songwriters locally and made some albums. Um, and even that, I got tired of doing that. But uh, you know, I've just started playing with uh, with some friends again, and I'm playing some shows locally. We we have to come up with a name real quickly. We uh, we have two days to come up with a name. Uh, we had a gig up to John and Peters, and they were going to pretend up the sheet. We came up with the name Reader Station. R-E-E-D-E-R. Oh, okay. -E -E uh, we, we don't have any recordings yet. And we're just having fun. It's... But, you know, it sounds great. It's a, it's a three-piece band. I've never played in a three-piece band. That's awesome. Mm. Yeah. New adventures. New adventures. Yeah, I, I have to play differently. <laughs> I'm, used yeah. wall of sound. I'm used to a wall of sound of guitars. But we're, we're, yeah, it's just bass, drums, and, the, and one guitar. But you have to play bass differently. You have to be a little more rock solid, you know. Mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't go off and do your little runs here and there. You know? 
staying right in the pocket, so to speak. Many, many thanks. Many, many thanks to Steve Garvey for making the time to talk to us. We really appreciate it. Like he said, his band is so new, they don't even have a website. So for more information on where they're playing, you can check Steve out on Facebook. The only gig they do have on the books is January 22nd, where they're playing at John and Peter's in New Hope, Pennsylvania. You can check us out on all the various socials. Be sure to visit our website at rockandrollgradschool.com. And don't forget to leave us a review. Today's show is produced by myself and Heidi Hegquist. Our reluctant producers are John Sauvé and Sandy Stone. Our willing producers are Rachel Allen and Randy Jeanette. Our intern is Zach Jackson. This one's for Philippe. Thank you, good night, and may all your favorite bands stay together. Stay together.